So we are uh, tremendously grateful for you today. Hey, we want you, if you have in your hands, I don't know that you'd be able to see them, but those of you who are watching online, and if you want to go to our live streaming service, you can find the list of promises that we want to go over today. Or you want to look behind me, we can find the find the partial list of the promises. But everybody just repeat these words with me because we want to make this declaration over ourselves. And this is on the promises that we've been, been on this series for the last two or three weeks. And uh, we just now we want to talk about what those promises look like for us. Could you just repeat these words after me? I am loved by God. I am a child of God. I am redeemed from the hand of the enemy. I am forgiven. I am saved by grace through faith. I am justified. I am sanctified. I am a new creature. I am a partaker of his divine nature. I am redeemed from the curse of the law. I am delivered from the power of darkness. I am led by the spirit of God. I am a son of God. I am kept in safety wherever I go. I am getting all my needs met in Christ Jesus. I am casting all my cares on Jesus. I am strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I am an heir of the blessing of Abraham. I am doing all things through Christ who strengthens me. Are we? <laughs> yeah, I went backwards, didn't I? Okay, let's go to the next one, number 22. Here we go. Let me get, get us all squared away. It's all squared away. I love these, but it's, now I've got them in different order. So, so here we go. Everybody say it with me. I'm blessed coming in and blessed going out. I am an heir of eternal life. I'm blessed with all spiritual blessings. I am healed by his stripes. I am exercising, exercising my authority over the enemy. I'm above only and not beneath. I am more than a conqueror. I am establishing God's word on earth. I am an overcomer by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony. I am daily overcoming the devil. I am not moved by what I see. I am walking by faith and not by sight. I am casting down vain imaginations. I am bringing every thought into captivity. I am being transformed by the renewing of my mind. I am a laborer together with God. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am an imitator of Jesus. I am the light of the world. I am blessing the Lord at all times and continually praising him with my mouth. Amen. I love it. So let's pray. Father, we thank you so much that we can make these declarations of your promises of ourselves. 
We pray that just for a few moments, as we examine how, what it means to be justified and what it means to be sanctified, that you would cause us as your people just to experience you in a greater and brand new way. So in Jesus' mighty name, we ask God that you would speak to each one of our hearts, speak to our minds, speak to our souls, speak to our strengths. Help us, God, to see who you created us to be and the price that you paid that we might walk in relationship with you. So in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your compassion that you are demonstrating towards us, your people. And we thank you, God, that all things are working together for our good. In Jesus' mighty name, we do praise you and give you thanks for it. Everybody love the Lord says amen and amen. Well, we're going to talk today about what does it mean for us to be justified? I am justified. Let's look at number six. It says, I am justified. Romans chapter five, verse one says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That means that you and I, we've been justified by faith and we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but I've been in some situations that wasn't that peaceful. And I've been in some situations with people that were, were confrontational. And it was amazing to me when I could work out that confrontation, when I could get to a place of peace in my life. And this is really saying in Romans chapter 5, verse 1, in order for me and you to have peace with God, we have to come through our relationship with the Father that happens when God gives us peace, that Jesus becomes that mediator for us. And it says that you and I were justified by faith. This word is just as if we never ever seen. It's a whole concept that, you know, initially God was, he was keeping track and still is. The Bible says the very hairs on our head are all numbered. So the very heads, every single one of our hairs on our heads are, are all numbered. And God is, he's looking at our life and he, he, he says, listen, I'm going to Take a make notice of your life and I'm going to look at your life as it compares to the Ten Commandments. And God says, listen, I don't want you to have any other gods before me. And I can imagine as God, as he's going through the Ten Commandments for each one of our lives, he can look at our lives and he can say to us on this day back in 1999 that you had another God before me. It, I can imagine that he can say, go back and say in 2005 that you made an idol out of this thing as he looked through the Ten Commandments. I can imagine on this on this. Day he would say that you use my name in, that, in vain. And imagine on this day, he could say, listen, you didn't remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. That God could have made a list for every single one of us. And he could have made a list that include how many times that we lied on our neighbor, how many times we committed a sexual sin, how many times we stole something, how many times we, we coveted something that was somebody else's. But thanks be to God that we have been justified through what God has given us in the Lord Jesus Christ, our faith in Jesus causes us to be at peace with God. Everybody say peace with God. That's what we all want. We want to have peace with God. We want to have a relationship with God. And this word justification, uh, it comes from a, a, a root, a, the, the root word of justification. It's, it's kind of like a legal word, uh, but it's a, it's a word that means that like we would call in the legal system to be acquitted, like once you know that everything has been counted against you, that the uh, law is to say, listen, we're just going to throw that out. We're not going to hold it against you. We ain't going to give you all the violations that you had when he was trying to get away from the police and that high-speed chase of yours. You know, uh, he, he said, I'm going to throw some of those things out. And this is what God's done for us. That it's through the person of Jesus Christ that he looked at every single thing that we've done wrong. And he said, I'm going to cause you to have peace with me. But that peace that you're going to have with me is going to come through your faith in Jesus Christ. And when you are justified, Christ is saying, listen, I'm going to wash away. I'm going to make your slate clean. I'm going to make, give you a clean record. We're going to start with a fresh start. And when we start with a fresh start, God says, I'm not going to remember all those things that you've done to offend me. So God says, I want you to be justified. Everybody say justified. Next thing God says he wants us to do, he wants us to be sanctified. Everybody say sanctified. So 1 Corinthians 6, verse 11, it says this. It says, for such were some of you, 
It says, but you were washed and you were sanctified and you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. So this word has given us a promise that each one of us that we've been washed, we've been sanctified, we've been justified and we were washed in something. It says that we're washed in the name of the Lord and we're washed in the spirit of our God. I love it because this is not only speaking to us, but it's also speaking to the people that were the church of Corinth and and 1 Corinthians chapter 6, this whole passage begins off with God talking to a group of people. He says, listen, I want to look at your situation that's going on with you. Why is it there's so many disputes among you in your families and between families that you don't like each other? Matter of fact, you go and you make individuals that don't even believe in God to be your legal representation and they go and argue for you. He says, is there not anyone that's wise among you? And in verse 9, he says, I want you to understand something something, that God is not mocked. He says that there's not going to be any unrighteous people that stand before God. Then he he goes on as he's speaking to this group of people that don't, don't understand judgment and don't understand sanctification and don't understand justification and don't understand being washed. He begins to list all the different things that they had done to one another. He says, I don't want you, I want you to know and understand something. You're looking at the, the mite, or the, the, the little splinter in your neighbor's eye, and you're refusing to look at the beam in your own eye. He says, there's gonna, not going to be anyone that has sexual sins in their life that stand before God. He says, there's not going to be any fornicators, nor adulterers, or, or um, uh, men that are committing sex with men or it's, uh, people that are abusing their body or there's not going to be anyone that's going to be a thief or no one that's going to be a, a person that ex- extorts. He goes on listing the 11 things that will keep us from the presence of God and when he lists those 11 things we get to this verse in verse 11 he says and such were some of you. Do you remember where you were? While you're looking at the, the moat in your neighbor's eye and you got the beam in your eye, do you remember how God brought you out of adultery? Do you remember how God brought you out of fornication? Do you remember how God brought you out of theft? Do you remember how God brought you out of extortion? Do you remember how God brought you out of abuse with your words? He says, I want you to know. I want you to know that such was some of you. But what did God do for you? He says, God sanctified you. God's washed you. God has justified you. In the name of the Lord and by the spirit of God. And what does this word justification mean? Sanctification. What does sanctification mean? And it's the word hagazo. Hagazo, which means to make holy. The sanctification is a process. You know, I, uh, well, we had some flooring done in our laundry room. And while the flooring was, was going, being done in the laundry room, they were putting a towel down. And, the, and the, you know, we try to start off ahead of it, you know, when this is the pile of laundry. The pile of laundry got to about knee level. The pile of laundry got to about thigh level. And the pile of laundry got to about the waist. Then we got done with the floor and we went in and we started washing. You know, try to get caught back up after we got done with the floor. And, you know, I don't really know what I'm doing in there. But so I, I thought, I thought I could just go in there and throw some towels and some jeans and some, you know, uh, dry fit stuff all in the thing try to try to help out and I was informed that you don't do it like that is there a certain way I didn't know you know but I'm trying to help out here's the point God says listen I want you to know that just like that washing machine if you threw if I threw it in there and it's a 23 minute cycle and after three minutes I open the door and say, oh yeah that's a little bit wet but I, I tell you that's gonna be good enough I'll throw it out on the line and I'll just let it dry out and I'll wear that tomorrow. No, it's not clean, is it? This process of sanctification, it is a process. The God says, listen, I want you to stay in the process and allow me to cleanse you, allow me to make you holy, to allow me to purify you. And that's what God's saying he wants to do for me and you. Amen. He wants to sanctify us. He wants to us to know that if you had a sin in a certain area, he's not going to continue to leave you in that sin. I love it because this word, not only sanctification, but the word justification is just as if you had never sinned, but it's like God gives you, everybody say a new name. So when he, where you were a failure before, he calls you an overcomer. But where you were defeated before, he calls you a victor. Like it's this, it's a word that means the opposite of whatever you've been experiencing in your life. God says, listen, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a I'll give you a new name. I love it because not only does God sanctify us from our sins and he justifies us from our sins and he causes us to come back in to peace with him 
through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. But he goes on to give us a promise that's found in Psalms 103. So in Psalms 103, we find these words written in verse beginning at verse eight. And it says this. It says, but the Lord is merciful. The Lord is merciful. The Lord. Everybody say the Lord. Lord. He is merciful. The Lord is gracious and he's slow to anger and he's abounding in mercy. Verse nine says he will not always strive with us. It says, nor will he keep his anger forever. Verse 10 says he has dealt, not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. Verse 11 says, for as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards us to those who fear him. And verse 12 says this, as far as the east is from the west, So far has he removed our transgressions from us. And I don't know about you, but I looked at this as far as he sees from the West. So has God removed our transgressions for us. And I think the East being all, maybe that's in China somewhere. I thought the West being out by Hawaii, you know, out past California. I looked at it that way and I got to doing some research on the Hubble telescope. Anybody ever heard of the Hubble telescope? The Hubble telescope is a telescope that takes pictures of galaxies and stars and planets and the gases in the rings of Saturn and the moons orbiting around all these different planets. I get get pictures from all over the world, all over the universe. And it took a picture of a galaxy that was uh, uh, being developed that's 30 million light years away. You say, Pastor Bobby, what's the big deal, man? That ain't no big deal, is it? Well, if that's where the east is, 30 million light years is a big deal. If you could travel at 186,000 miles a second, and you can, and you can do that 186,000 miles for 60 minutes and make an hour, for 24 hours, that would make a day, for 365 days, that would make a year, and you've done that for 30 million years, and you got an idea of how far away that galaxy was that the Hubble telescope captured that image. And God said, listen, that's what I want to do with your sins, and that's what I want to do with your transgressions, and that's what I want to do with your iniquities. I'm going to separate those things from you. I'm not going to remind you every single time that you have a failure. Look at what you've done wrong now. And, oh, how'd you do that again? Oh, you lied again. Oh, you cussed again. Oh, you skipped out on church again. Oh, you used my name in vain. God says, listen, I want to have you know that I'm going to separate your transgressions and your iniquities. I'm going to separate those from you. And I'm going to extend my grace and my mercy and my compassion towards you. And I want you to know that we serve a God that loves us that dearly, that he wants to extend his grace and mercy and compassion towards us. And I love it because this this the, the David, as he wrote these Psalms, he says, listen, I want you to know that you have a God that looks at you that way, that he wants you to be justified. He wants you to be sanctified. He wants you to know that he's going to separate your sins, his, your sins and transgressions from you. And he's not going to remind you every single time that you fail, that you are a failure. But God says, listen, I'm going to give you the ability to overcome all those things that have been overcoming you all those years. And if you invite me into it, I love it because I, uh, this year in about 20, 30, about another 30 days or so, Marcia and I will celebrate 30 years of marriage, 30 years. (laughs) And, uh, 15 years of marriage. We took our 15th wedding anniversary. We went to Israel and we went to, uh, all the sites. We went to the sea of Galilee and we went to the, the garden tomb and we went to Bethlehem and we went to John the Baptist, the place that he was born. We went to like all these different sites all over, all over Israel. And one of the places that we went to was just seemed like the Capitol building uh, uh, of Israel. But at the Capitol building, they have this thing called a menorah. And what the menorah represented in the tabernacle of Moses, the very first station of the people when they were coming to make things right with, with, with God, they didn't have something called justification and sanctification. They actually brought that lamb and that, or that ram or that bull and they would take it to the station and they would offer it as a sacrifice at that station and the blood of the lamb or the, the, the bull would be captured in a bowl at this thing called 
called a brazen altar. And then the priests, they would go to this thing called a laver and they would look in this polished brass bowl filled with water. It looked like a mirror and they would quote the Ten Commandments and they would ask God if they had sinned against him in any way, if they'd made an idol of anything in his way, if they'd used his name in vain, if they hadn't remembered the Sabbath day to keep it on. They would go through the Ten Commandments. They would ask God what they'd done to their neighbor. Then they would go to this thing that this called a menorah, which represents the seven spirits of God. Seven spirits of God. And then we find those in Isaiah 11, verse 1 and 2. A spirit of wisdom and knowledge and understanding, power and counsel and might. But when we went, Marcia and I went to the, the capital of Israel, at, there at the capital building, our White House, the, their parliament building, we see this ginormous menorah. This thing is probably 20 feet across and at least 25 feet tall. It is humongous. And it has the, at the very tops of it would be places where you would hold candles. And as they look, as you looked along the side of the plate, plates of the menorah, you could see like images graven into the, each one of the sides of it. It was images like David holding up the head of Goliath. It was images like Jacob wrestling with the angel. It was images like Jonah in the belly of the whale. It was images that the children of Israel, even at their parliament building, they placed these images up at the menorah as a reminder of all the great things that God had done for their country and what God could do for them. And so what am I saying to you? If you look back at your life, God's saying to you, listen, I want you to take these promises. I want you to read these promises. Those of you who read down those promises with us that are posted on our comments in this, in this message, on this streaming message, I want you to reflect on those things and say, listen, what has God done for me in my life? What things has God brought me through? That I know that if it had not been for God, I would have never made it through. And God's promises to you are that real. If he done it in the past, he done it for these individuals. He redeemed us from the hand of the enemy. He done that from da for David. He's going to do it for us. We know that we are forgiven by God. Caution says God has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his son. But baby, we don't have any problems worrying about the enemy. He tells us that we have, uh, oh, we're overcoming all the power of the enemy. When we stand on God's promises we know that the same Jesus that done it for every person that's lived before us and even on that menorah, they've got engraving images of God's promises being fulfilled in the lives of people that God wants to do that for you. Let's send our feet. We're going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for these individuals that are here in this room that are standing on your promises. May we, may we look back at our lives and look at all the different situations and circumstances and challenges that you brought us through. We pray in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus that you would touch, that you would heal, that you would deliver, that you would cleanse, that you would make us holy, that you would forgive us, that you would cause every single transgression and iniquity, every sin that we've ever committed. Lord Jesus, that you would cause the blood of Jesus to purify us and pay the price for those sins that we can be at peace with you. And we desire that, God, whatever those sins are that have happened in our life are happening in our life today. We place those sins at your feet. We say to you, God, we need the blood of Jesus and we desire to have peace with you. So in Jesus name, we come boldly to your throne of grace. And we ask God that you would shower us with your blessings and your favor. So I'm praying for those in this room and those that are watching by way of live stream, that this is your moment. This is your season. This is your time to say, hey, Pastor Bobby, I didn't know that justification was something that I needed or sanctification was something that I could up, obtain. But today I've learned that and I want it. So if you desire to bring Jesus into your life and allow Jesus to wash you and his spirit to, to wash you and to sanctify you and to justify you, this is your moment. This is your time. So Lord Jesus, I'm praying for every single person that's, that's watching, every single person in this room, that you would just extend your abundant grace and mercy and compassion and love that you have for us. Extend those things to us now. God, we bless you, God. We thank you for your amazing grace. We thank you for your tender mercies. We thank you for your compassions. Would you please pray this prayer with me, dear Lord Jesus? Thank you for justifying me. Thank you for sanctifying me. 
in your name. I receive by faith peace with God that you purchased for me. Thank you for washing away every offensive thing that I've done that's displeased God. Today, I invite you to sanctify me, make me holy all the days of my life. And I give you praise for doing it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I mean, let's give God a great big hand clap of praise for what he's done, for what he's done.